So when did the Roman Empire fall? Depending on who you ask, you might receive a different answer. I have heard all of the ones in this video being argued for at least once. Today we are ranking dates of the fall of the Roman Empire based on objective characteristics as well as just my personal opinion. 476, the Normie Standard. The Google result that you get when you type in when did the Roman Empire fall. Of course, Germanic King Odoacer deposes Romulus Augustulus, the last Western Roman Emperor. This counts as the end date because unlike some others, Odoacer did not choose to usurp the throne. He specifically sent back the imperial regalia to Constantinople, the Eastern Roman capital. So the entire weight of this date comes from the epic narrative spun around it. Attila the Hun, Flavius Aetius, the so-called Last Roman, King Arthur are all part of this tragic story that is in many ways fundamental to how countries that are part of Western civilization see themselves today. The obvious flaw is that the Eastern Roman Empire survives past this date and should not be just discounted. I'm putting it in the B tier. 480 AD, the Dalmatian variant. Julius Nepos, the penultimate emperor of the Western Roman Empire, did not die when he was overthrown, but fled to Dalmatia, where he held out until 480 AD, still backed by the Eastern Roman Empire and even nominally recognized as emperor by Odoacer. Then he was killed by his generals without naming a successor. This take is the same as the last one, except that it involves the Eastern Roman Empire more, which makes obvious the fact that the Eastern half of the Empire still very much exists, making the whole hypothesis very silly. D tier. 486 AD, the Gallic variant. In the tempest of the Western Roman collapse, one remnant of Roman civilization in Western Europe held out longer than others. The domain of Siagrius, an island of Roman law amidst the sea of barbarism. I like this one a lot. Who doesn't like a story of struggle against all odds to preserve the things that you cherish even as everything around you is falling apart? The part I don't like is that Siagrius is not much more than a common warlord and not exactly the embodiment of Roman virtue. And the Eastern Roman Empire exists as well. Overall, a B tier. 1453 AD, the Reddit Romabu. It's of course the fall of Constantinople. Constantine XI Palaiologos, last emperor of the Romans, refuses to flee and dies in battle. Historian John Norwich, for example, describes in emotional detail the last moments of the empire, the last prayer where both Orthodox and Catholic defenders held mass together, the acts of local heroism, a Venetian ship laden with supplies and weapons for the defenders, making it past the barbarian fleet blockading the city. The final words of the Emperor, The city is fallen and I am still alive, before tearing off his insignia and charging into the fray. Overall, very epic. The only stain on this one is the fact that the Byzantine Empire of the 15th century is just so far removed in its identity from the classical Romans that it may require some suspension of disbelief to accept this narrative. Still, a very solid A tier. 1204, the Comnenian Doomer. The sack of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade was simply too terrible. The city never recovered and the imperial remnants could never live up to the old glory. According to this view, the abomination known as the Latin Empire, the Latinocratia, supplanted the corrupt and decaying Roman Empire in 1204. This take is interesting because it adds a new angle to the story. It was not the nomadic warriors from the steppe or their descendants such as the Ottoman Turks who entered the Roman Empire, but Westerners who violated and desecrated the ancient land that gave them the bedrock of their Western civilization. This is kind of an anti-Western, perhaps Russian take, who like to see themselves as the inheritors of the Byzantine tradition and in opposition to Western Europe and their values. Very interesting, definitely something new, but still more of a C tier, I would say. 1461 AD, the pedantic autist. 
If we disagree with the 1204 view, if we accept that the Empire of Nicaea was in fact a continuation of the Roman Empire after Constantinople fell to Westerners in 1204, which we have to do since it is the Empire of Nicaea which reconquered Constantinople in 1261 and prolonged the continued existence of the Roman Empire until at least 1453, then there is no reason why we should not also grant that same legitimacy to other Byzantine rump states emerging from the 1204 catastrophe. Those are the Despotate of Epirus and the Empire of Trapezunt. The Empire of Trapezunt held out against the barbarians until 1461. This is also the year when the final Byzantine garrisons in Greece surrendered to barbarian forces or fought their way out to reach Venetian territory. In June 1461, the Roman Imperial Eagle was still flying above Salmenico Castle of the Peloponnese Peninsula. Okay, I guess this one is technically true, but is it still the Roman Empire if the central polity and the imperial title are gone? Do those people have any ethnic, cultural, linguistic, religious or administrative structural connection to classical Rome? Can we still include them in the term Roman? How much inclusion is too much? How much can we dilute the definition of Roman before it loses all meaning? Is it enough to simply say that one is a Roman? Maybe from a modern American perspective, it is. There is something romantic about saying, as long as I live, the Roman Empire continues to exist. Fine, I guess they count. I still don't like this reasoning. D tier, actually C tier, but only because the dynasty ruling Trapezunt was the old imperial Komnenos family. 1475, the Europa Universalis player. Yes, it even says in Wikipedia that the last rump state of the Eastern Roman Empire was the Principality of Theodoro which held up more than 20 years after the fall of Constantinople. This take is like a weaker version of the last one. The Emperor of Trapezunt was a break-off rump state of the Byzantine Empire. This one is a break-off rump state of the Emperor of Trapezunt. It's a bit questionable whether the Crimea was Roman in the first place. It was but a client kingdom under the classical Roman Empire and was only annexed and integrated in the 6th century. How many degrees of separation from ancient Rome can you have and still claim to be Roman? This is getting ridiculous. D tier. Next is 1479, the avid Wikipedia reader. I shouldn't even be including this one really, except that I've read someone argue for that date. The despotate of Epirus, the other rump state of the Byzantine Empire, is sometimes said to have fallen in 1479. But that is simply wrong, as it only exists at this point as either a Serbian or an Italian administrative unit. This one certainly has nothing to do with ancient Rome, F tier. 578 AD. Okay, this is the last one I'm including simply because I've seen it being unironically argued somewhere. 578 is when the last supposed remnant of the Western Roman Empire, the Romano-Mauritanian Kingdom, falls to the Byzantine reconquest. I suppose if you only recognize the Western Roman Empire as the true heir of ancient Rome, and all its remnant successor states, but not the Eastern Empire, this could make sense. Except, of course, the fact that the romano mauritanian Kingdom was not an unconquered and forgotten about Roman province, but a result of the conquest of Mauritania Tingitana by Berber tribes. Ridiculous from beginning to end, F tier. 395 AD, the Unitarian Purist. The Roman Empire as an entity stopped existing when it was split into two rump states with two separate governments, simple as. Okay, this one is idiotic, but because Roman history after 395 AD can generally be described as disappointing, I can see where they're coming from. Just a contrast between Theodosius II and Honorius makes me put this one into the seat here. 293 AD the purest extremist. The Roman Empire was first formally split in two in 293 AD with two separate administrations as part of the Tetrarchy. Diocletian, the ultimate splitter, ended the United Roman Empire. Personally, I was disappointed when I found this out and it was a time I used to think that technically 293 is the date when the Roman Empire ends. This is a very harsh criterion to go by, though. Also, the Empire was reunited several times later on, including the long reign of Constantine the Great, D tier in my opinion. 
312 AD. The pagan nativist. Rome stopped being Rome when it abandoned its spiritual origins and was taken over by a foreign religion worshipping an executed rebel from Judea. Nothing did more to undermine the mighty warrior spirit of the true Roman. While I can sympathize with the view that the Roman pantheon was essential to being Roman, and even with the narrative that it was supposedly the soft, turn-the-other-cheek nature of Christianity that enfeebled the Romans, there are just too many areas of Roman life that continue unimpeded beyond 312 AD. There is no Christianization of the administrative system or the legal system. After all, the Codex Justinianus from the 6th century still allows for slavery. Another point is that the old pagan gods are also not banned until 395 AD. And yet another point is the fact that the cult of Sol Invictus, in a way, already constituted a monotheistic proto-religion which dominated the empire from the time of Emperor Aurelian to that of the first Christian Emperor Constantine. Jesus does not replace the old Roman pantheon. He replaces another monotheistic deity. And if we don't discard Emperor Aurelian, the Restitutor Orbis, as non-Roman, why should we discard Constantine? Deed here overall, I think. Somewhere between the 16th and 20th century, the history memer asserts that some country inherited the Roman ideals or territory or the last dynasty or mission, which means that the fall of the Roman Empire should be dated at that inheritor country's end. For example, the Ottoman Empire, the Russian Empire or the HRE, the Holy Roman Empire. The problem with accepting any of these is that it dilutes what it means to be Roman. If the definition of what does and doesn't count as Rome is stretched so far as to include the Holy Roman Empire, does it still mean anything at all? Exists to this day the ideologue. If he's not a YouTuber making a meme about how Finland is the true heir of the Roman Empire, he's making some sort of point related to modern politics. He may be a Euro-Federalist showing you the building of the European Parliament, which resembles the for some reason ruined version of the Roman Colosseum. He may be a Russian nationalist explaining how the invasion of Ukraine is simply Russia carrying on its Roman mission. He may be an American who says that the US is the inheritor of the Roman identity and how the Republic is about to fall and become an empire probably asks you to vote one way or another. Honestly, these are all terrible, but actually very entertaining. I can't help but put them into the seat here, at least. Roughly 8th century. The average historic atlas enjoyer. In this historical atlas, the map of Europe for the 5th century says Eastern Roman Empire, but the map for the 10th century says Byzantine Empire, which is a different name. This one is not great because this stick is so primitive, but not terrible either, since it seems to grasp at a truth the other ones don't seem to perceive. It doesn't give you a precise date and isn't really aesthetically pleasing, but I feel like this is the first date presented that reconciles the two notions. One, that the Roman aesthetic was still present at the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD and after that as well. And two, that by 1453 the Roman aesthetic was distorted too much to be considered fully Roman. I'm putting this one into the B tier. 698 AD. I think this one is called the Ascended Chad. 698 Anno Domini is the year when the transformation of the Eastern Roman Empire to the Byzantine Empire was completed. First, let's accept that the Eastern Roman Empire was in fact Roman. What determines a country's identity? A reasonable answer would be the people and the institutions which carry on the tradition and culture and keep alive the overall aesthetic of the country throughout the ages. By the 7th century AD, Constantinople, like the imperial capital in Isaac Asimov's foundation, was entirely dependent on a steady stream of cargo ships bringing in food from the provinces, mostly from Egypt in the Byzantine case. In 619, and then completely and irreversibly in 640, Egypt was lost to the barbarians. The supply of the capital collapsed. For the first time in 500 years, the grain dole was suspended. The population of the empire fell by half, and the population of Constantinople 
fell from roughly half a million to 50,000. The imperial capital became but a shadow of its former self, not only in population, but in its cultural and civilizational output as well. The majority of noble senatorial families lost their estates as the Levant and almost all of the imperial possessions in Europe were lost to barbarians. A similar fate awaited the imperial institutions also, with the introduction of the theme system, which is the name of the new administrative unit, the old imperial administrative framework was massively simplified and made primitive. The eight different levels of Roman administration were replaced by a single level, with each theme being despotically ruled over by a strategos. Those were answering directly to the Basileos and were not much more than local warlords. The complexity of the ancient Roman civilian administration was all but abolished in favour of this newly created position, which combined both military and civilian administration under the authority of one person. The process of introducing the themes was completed in 695 AD. As a compounding factor, in 698 AD Carthage, with the whole exarchate of Africa, was lost to barbarians bereaving the empire of its other major source of grain and manpower. With the near simultaneous disappearance of the bulk of the Roman intellectual elite, its culture-carrying class, its institutions and its military tradition, after all the Roman legion system disappeared in the early 17th century as well, it is fair to say then that the state which existed after 698 AD is not Roman but some sort of medieval formation a state without a civilizational mission, except perhaps a vague Christian element. Instead of a name representing a universal set of values, the term Roman becomes a name describing a particular ethnic affiliation. Hieronymus Wolf, the German 16th century historian who invented the term Byzantine as distinct from the term Roman, was right in my opinion, and the Roman Empire ceased to exist in 698 AD. S-tier, in my opinion at least. All of that is just my opinion with some things that I've picked up somewhere on the internet. Actually, there is one I forgot to mention and add to this. It's the it's 47 BC, the Senate Loyalist. Of course, every true Roman watching will know that the Roman Republic was the true carrier of Roman glory and Roman virtue. And in 47 BC, when the Roman Republic ended, Rome ended as well. And all that other nonsense about, oh, it survived until the 5th, 6th century. It's nothing but cope. None of them can live up to the glory of the old Republic. Not Aurelian, not Constantine, not Marcus Aurelius, not Flavius Aetius, not Trajan. None of them. <laughs>